Hello everyone, and welcome to a making a video on the process of making one of my favorite projects I've taken on this year. It's a late 18th century inspired sack back gown, loosely based on an extant example that I'll have linked in the description box down below. I made this project out of striped quilting cottons and lace from my stash, and paired it with a silk taffeta hat that is decorated with a pirate ship, of all things. And I actually used the ship as inspiration for this project. I wanted it to have a less polished look to it, kind of like pirating meets classic 18th century lady. And I think I succeeded. So let's just jump right into how I did it. First step was draping the pattern, and I'm doing this on a dress form similar to my size with a pair of stays laced over top to imitate the 18th century shape. Then I'm pinning and pulling fabric taut over the form and drawing the seam placement and neckline onto the fabric. Excess fabric gets trimmed away and the process continues until I'm happy with the shape. And after draping the pattern, I trace each piece onto paper and add seam allowances. Then I'll make a mock-up out of muslin to test the fit and make alterations before moving forward with the final fabric. And my final fabric for this project is a striped quilting cotton. I wanted to match the stripes up, so I'm fussy cutting out the placement of the straps. I'm also only cutting one layer at a time so I can make sure they are perfectly symmetrical. And I do that by using the pieces I just cut as a guide. They are flipped over so the right sides are facing the remaining fabric, then moved around until I find a point where all the stripes match up. Then I cut around the pieces so I have two mirror images of each other. I did this with the front panels and the strap, but the back pieces won't be visible on the final garment, so they were cut normally without attention paid to the stripe placement. And now all those pieces, so the front, strap, side, back, and back are cut from lining, which is a lightweight cotton. Lastly, I cut out the sack back panel, which will be sewn to the back of the bodice and form the back of the skirt. Now assembly can begin, and I'm starting by ironing the outer edge of the straps inward by a half inch then folding the front end inward by half inch and pinning it so the right sides are facing up and the raw edges are even with the fronts of the bodice. I repeated this with the lining, but instead of pinning the straps on top of the front pieces, I'm pinning them with the right sides facing each other so this can be sewn as a normal seam, whereas the straps on the striped layer were hand sewn on with slip stitches. Now I'm pinning the side back seams for the striped layer and lining. And the center back seam for the sack back portion. And I took extra care with pinning this piece since I wanted the stripes to line up perfectly. The bodice was sewn together with half inch allowances, and though I didn't pin it on camera, I also sewed the center back seam for the striped layer and the lining, in addition to the back seam for the sack panel. Now the remaining seams for the lining and striped layer could be pinned and sewn. The striped layer is also the outer layer of the bodice and the base layer for the sack back panel, so I might call it that later in the video. Now I'm marking the Watteau pleats onto the sack back panel using chalk. Then I'm pleating that panel by bringing the fabric together at the chalk markings and pinning it down. Here I'm rounding the corners of the two rectangles which will make up the side slash fronts of the skirt. These are sewn onto the remaining long edges of the sack back panel. That might be hard to picture, so here's a crappy picture, or a crappy drawing, rather, that hopefully makes it a little bit clearer. And speaking of crappy drawings, I have a few more for you, because the next step was pinning the sack back to the bodice, which is arguably the most important step, and I didn't film it at all. So here's the bodice base, or at least the two back panels, of the bodice. 
And this is the stack back after pleating it down. It is drafted so the sides and top edge match to the dimensions and curvature of the back and side back panels of the bodice. So A and B line up. And edge A on the sack back panel is actually turned inward by a half inch and sewn down to the edge of the bodice base. The bodice base holds the bodice close to the body, while the sack back can hang free. But what about those skirt panels, you may ask? They actually don't get in the way of this step at all because they are sewn on lower down. At this point, they hang free and don't interfere with the bodice at all. However, they do get gathered down and eventually sewn onto the bottom edge of the bodice base, which you can see me doing here. I gathered the sides of the skirt portions down by hand using running stitches. Then the top edge of the skirt portion was pinned to the bottom edge of the bodice and sewn on with the right sides facing each other. I'm sorry this process isn't clear. It's a really complicated and unusual way for a garment to go together. It's difficult to document and describe in a way that makes sense. Like, it doesn't fully make sense to me, and I was the one that sewed it myself. So actually describing it is kind of a lost cause. Anyway, here's the finished effect. Now I'm pinning the lining on top with the right sides facing each other, and I'll be sewing around the neckline of the front panels, inner edge of the straps, and top edge of the back panels. The lining is folded inward and the bottom edge is turned inward and pinned down. This is so it covers the raw edge of the gathers. I sewed all the way across this edge and around the front edge as well, using whip stitches to secure the layer in place. To prevent the lining from shifting and becoming visible, I'm using running stitches to secure it around the neckline. Now I'm folding the remaining end of the strap inward by a half inch and slip stitching it to the back of the bodice. With the bodice almost done, I switched my focus to the skirt and folded the hem inward by three quarters of an inch twice to create a neat rolled hem, which was then pinned down. It also got sewn down using whip stitches. Now it's back to the bodice, and though historically this would most likely hook closed, I wanted it to look more piratey, so I decide on lacing instead, which means I have to punch holes for the lacing, so that's what I'm doing here. And I'm using a die I got from corset making supplies, and a hammer that I got for Christmas one year, because that's helpful information, right? Now I'm stitching around the holes using embroidery floss until they are densely covered. The sleeve pattern for this project is an altered version of M7826, a great pattern if I do say so myself, but I added a slit in the cuff, slimmed it down, and lengthened the pattern to get a more customized fit. I also extended and sharpened the shape of the sleeve cap to fit this garment's arm size. Then I repeated the steps you saw for the bodice earlier, where I cut one layer of fabric at a time and used the piece that was just cut as a guide for cutting the next one. Just like with the bodice, I'm also cutting lining for the sleeves, but I'm flatlining the pieces, so pinning them immediately to the lining layer before sewing them together. Now the sleeves are pinned, then sewn, and I'm sewing the edge with the slit first and leaving the bottom 3 inches open. Then I iron the seam open and turn the seam allowance around the slit and the cuff inward twice so it was neatly finished. Now I could sew the remaining sleeve seam, which also got ironed open. Then I turned the bottom edge of the sleeve inward three quarters of an inch twice, creating another rolled hem that could be whip stitched down. 
Now this is my really awful, spectacularly terrible attempt at filming pinning the bottom half of the sleeve to the arm side. And my even worse attempt at filming actually sewing it on. But basically the bottom half of the sleeve is pinned to the portion of the arm side with the seam allowance, with the right sides facing each other. Then the head of the sleeve is tucked between the lining and outer layer of fabric and pinned on until it snugly fits the shoulder. One of the sides fit perfectly on the first go, and the other side took literal hours to do and still doesn't look as good as the other side. There's a little puckering at the back that refused to go away and drives me slightly crazy. <laughs> But that's life sometimes. So I decided it was good enough and began to sew it on. Here I'm stitching through the outer layer of fabric, the sleeve, and the lining, securing it all together. And now the dress is done, but it's a bit revealing since the skirt doesn't actually extend to the front. So I'm making an attached underskirt slash petticoat to go with it that will be visible at the front of the dress. This is made from two matching rectangles of fabric and one rectangle of muslin, which will add volume but be hidden at the back. All of these are cut to the same length. Then I sewed together the two matching panels, but left the top 10 inches or so open to let me get the garment on and off. I ironed the edges of the portion left open inward by an inch and ironed the entire seam open. Now I'm using chalk to mark a line 6 inches away from the hem of the skirt and pinning crocheted lace on top. And I took the lazy route this time and sewed the lace on by machine. Then I sewed the muslin panel to the front panels. And I turned the bottom edge inward by a half inch and stitched it down. Now I'm marking 4 inches away from the hem on the wrong side of the fabric and folding the bottom edge of the skirt upward so it meets that line and forms a 2 inch wide hem. Then I was pinned down and sewn by machine. I covered the stitching from the hem with more trim, but this time I'm using black ruffled trim, and this trim has visible top stitching on it already, which was the main reason why I was okay with sewing it on by machine as well. Then to balance it out, I sewed this trim on above the lace trim as well. Now while the skirt is flat, I'm stitching around the opening to keep the seam allowance in place. Then sewing the remaining seam closed. Now I'm pushing the fabric underneath the presser foot to gather it down to a quarter of its original length. And I do this by eye, but I've done it enough that I can do it pretty accurately at this point. Unfortunately my camera cut off, but here I'm sewing twill tape to the wrong side of the top edge of the skirt. And on one side, I have the underskirt extending past the edge of the bodice. This way the skirt opening overlaps and the skin isn't visible beneath it. For that part, I trimmed the top edge and folded the twill tape over top of it to hide the raw edge. And I whip stitched around that, too. This isn't the most flattering thing I've made. Late 18th century and early Regency styles don't flatter me much, but I had enough fun wearing this dress to make up for that. Overall, it turned out just like I had hoped, and I think the fit is really good. The fabrics worked together nicely, and it was super comfortable, though I did get some weird looks wearing it to the beach. I like to think they were looks of envy over my delightful hat. That would make the most sense. And speaking of delightful hat, I'll have a video about making that too, so subscribe and stay tuned if you're interested in seeing that. And if you enjoyed this video, giving it a like and a comment really helps me out. I also have a Patreon which makes projects like this one possible. There will be a link to that in the description box. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to all of you very soon.